Gary and I took a cruise to Alaska, and while he was there, he got a bad sinus infection that continued to bother him. So eventually he went to an ENT. He said, I'm just on an off chance, we're gonna send you for an MRI, and that's how they discovered the tumor. An acoustic neuroma. When you hear the word brain tumor, you immediately think of your mortality. But I am concerned. Learning you have a brain tumor, it's a terrifying thing, but Dr. Harar Shahinian, medical director of the Skull Base Institute of Los Angeles, has developed some really interesting and innovative techniques to help remove them. Thank you for joining us, because I, I am really excited to share some of these new techniques you're using, because for someone like Gary, this is his MRI, he had a really large tumor. He did, and uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, Gary had the largest, what we call a grade four tumor, which as you can see here, this entire thing is the tumor. And this thing here is his brain stem, which is really the most important part of the, of the brain. And you can see how it's pushed over uh, to the right side. This is his left side by the tumor. So the tumor is having a mass effect and without getting rid of that tumor, because that, that was a tumor in precious territory, correct? the most precious territory. That's a lethal tumor. Now, out of curiosity, before we get to some of the more nuanced elements of, of what you do, is there any rhyme or reason to who gets tumors like this? Well, this specific tumor is a mutation. Uh, the incidence is one in every 100,000 people. So we get about 3,000 of these tumors in the United States per year. But it's not hereditary. It doesn't, uh, uh, you know, just because somebody in your family had it doesn't mean you're going to have it. But the brain? precious territory and go through, let's talk about the old technique to remove a tumor like this. This is the way it's done everywhere in the world currently in 2013. Two teams of surgeons, uh, they drill a fairly large hole behind the ear. They bring the ear forward, the first team. The second team puts in a metal retractor to push the cerebellum, which is the lower brain, not the upper brain, but the lower brain. And there's the tumor, about the same size as this gentleman's tumor, and the tumor is taken out piecemeal. Usually a 12-hour procedure, uh, a two-week hospitalization with at least a week or five to seven day stay in the ICU. This is a piece of fat from the abdomen because there's such a big hole that you worry about brain fluid leaking from the incision. So you use the fat to, to block it. Big operation, big, big operation. recovery. But you've invented something that is quite unique. <laughs> well, this is the only place where it's done this way in the world currently. We make a dime size opening behind the ear like corking a precious bottle of wine. We go in, we encounter the tumor, we don't touch the brain, we don't touch the cerebellum, and we use ultrasonic, it's a form of a vacuum ultrasonically, and we go inside of the tumor and we ultrasonically take out the central core of the tumor to make a large tumor much smaller, and then we take the rest of the tumor, and then we put the piece of bone back in, just like corking back a precious bottle of wine. So Dr. Shane is basically talking about vacuuming out a tumor which <laughs> is pretty remarkable. And we're gonna take a look now at how Gary's actual surgery went. Here it is in all its glory, the tumor, okay? Mm -hmm. This is the alien that we're gonna try and get out, okay? Because this does not belong here. Gary has a large tumor at the most critical part of the brain. The procedure that we're going to use to remove it involves fiber optic technology in high definition. Instead of doing open brain surgery, uh, we're using a minimally invasive endoscopic procedure. Okay, we're gonna start. We will put a one inch incision behind Gary's left ear. We will drill a hole the size of a dime in his skull. Here is the bone. The whole procedure will be done through this opening. We will take out the tumor gradually this tumor, although it is not cancerous, it is still a killer because it kills by compressing the brain stem. This is the brain here, the cerebellum, there's the nerve, nerves below it, nerves in front of it. These are all areas of concern. Here we get. We're done with the tumor, we're just washing it out. Here is the hole that is left by this tumor. And now the brain will grow back in and fill this space. Everything went as planned. There were no glitches, no surprises. 
Maybe one of the most remarkable things about this procedure is how quickly a patient can re recover. This is Gary, eight days after having brain surgery. It has been eight days since my surgery. I'm feeling really well right now. I'm feeling, I'm feeling very comfortable. I mean, he walked, he's walking without his water. It is pretty amazing. Well, it's been even a few months since then. We're happy to report Gary says he's about 90% recovered. He's back at work. So the key is the tumor also is not causing any of the nerve damage. He can smile now. Is this, is this the kind of recovery you've been seeing? Time and time again. It's, it's really very different with this technique. Uh, patients leave the hospital in two days. As you saw, eight days, eight days later, he's walking normally. I talked to him this morning. He says hello. I saw his postoperative MRI, and I'm happy to report that the tumor is completely gone. And Dr. Jamie, really quickly, before we go to break, what are some signs and symptoms to look out for in, in terms of brain tumors like Gary's? With this specific type of tumor, the most important sign is unilateral hearing loss. That is, if you notice that you have a cell phone and you're not hearing as well on one side versus the other. Uh, other symptoms are balance issues, just like in this gentleman's case. Sometimes a little facial weakness on that side. But in this specific type of tumor, those are the symptoms and signs that people should be looking for. And I think the other thing that's unique about the brain is that a cancer can be benign, meaning it's not malignant. It doesn't have a tendency to spread. But it's not benign because in the brain, your brain is sitting in an enclosed space. And that mass effect from that benign tumor can compress other critical structures, and that's why it would eventually lead to death. Correct. These tumors kill by compression. And that's why they need to come out. Dr. Shahanian, excellent work. Thank you Thank so you very much for sharing with us.